Good day everyone. Today I'm going to discuss the member stiffness matrix for a bead. But before that, let's review some basic concepts in order to understand the derivation of the force coefficients of the beam stiffness matrix. So the slope deflection equation considering internal effects only is given by moment near equals 2 EI over L times 2 theta near plus 3 plus theta far minus 3 times delta over L. In this slope deflection equation, remember that moments and rotations that are clockwise directions are treated positive. In the situation below, delta over L also is positive because the core joining joint N and F is rotating clockwise. So that's why the value of theta over L, which is supposed to be the tangent of this angle, which is the angle itself, because the angle is very small, remember that, is clockwise. So it is treated positive in the application of that formula for slope deflection equation. So for this situation here, the distorted shape of the elastic curve, both theta n and theta far are clockwise. Therefore, they are treated positive when you apply this rotations to the slope deflection equation and delta over L is also positive because the core joining the near end and the far end rotates clockwise and vice versa. With respect to the global or the real coordinate system, remember that counterclockwise direction for rotation is positive. Upward displacements Upward forces are positive and, of course, counterclockwise moments are positive. So in this case, to have a positive upward displacement, that should be the rotation of the cord. So delta is positive for this case. That's the positive displacement. For the cord, the cord rotates clockwise. So that delta over L, it remains positive in this case because the cord rotates clockwise. However, for this case here, though this is positive displacement, when you substitute delta over L into the formula, because the cord from near end to far end rotates counterclockwise, then this is treated negative. In other, in other words, delta is treated negative. Although it's positive direction for our final answer for this with respect to the global coordinate system or the real coordinate system. So for this case, both theta at the near end and at the right end rotate counterclockwise. So they are positive rotations with respect to our final answer. But when you substitute them into the slope deflection equation, the, these thetas are treated negative as well as the delta over L will be treated negative when you substitute it there because the cord rotates counterclockwise. So we define a beam as a straight member whose loading is transverse or perpendicular to its axis. Therefore, axial effect will be treated zero or if there is, it's very minimal. The effect is minimal. That's why it's not considered in the formation of the stiffness matrix for a beam. So it, at any point on the beam, there are two forces, namely the vertical force and or shear or and the rotation. And this is this shear and rotation will be accompanied by deflection and rotation. So therefore, the size of the stiffness matrix member stiffness matrix of a beam is four by four two at each end, so reflection and rotation at one end, then on the other end, another deflection and rotation. So this is the expected size of the stiffness matrix for a beam. And remember the first number there corresponds to the row position and the second is the column position. So we derive all this 
force coefficients. We call them force coefficients. The meaning of KFD means the force at F due to the unit displacement applied at D and only at D. So that's it. So meaning to say K32 is the force at 3 due to the unit displacement at 2. K13 is the force at point 1 due to the unit displacement applied at position 3. So to understand what is meant by position, so this is position 1 for upward uh, displacement, positive, then position 2, rotation, counterclockwise, positive, position 3 is upward again for positive displacement, and position 4, or displacement for positive is counterclockwise at the other end. So that's it. I hope you can remember this numbering. Consider the numbering shown. So that's the numbering for where to apply the unit displacement at a time. So recall the, the slope deflection equation. So we apply a unit positive displacement at one and solve for the other forces at various positions. So that is we solve forces at one or the K11, the force at two or the K21, K31 and K41. So the right side is always 1 because we apply a unit displacement at point 1 or position 1. So this is the slope deflection equation. Remember that in the brackets there are three terms but in when we apply the unit displacement only one has a value the other will be 0. So for applying a unit upward displacement at 1 so that force is this reaction is K11, position 1, due to the unit displacement at 1. The moment here it would be marked K21, the moment at position 2, due to the unit displacement at 1. The reaction here is K31, because that's position 3, due to the unit displacement at 1. And the rotation would be K41, or the moment would be K41. So that's delta 1. The cord rotates clockwise, so delta is positive 1 in the application of this formula. The theta near and theta far are zeros because only this place at 1 is considered. So if we simplify this, we have 2EI over L times quantity negative 3 times 1 over L. And the result is negative 6EI over L squared. So this negative 6EI over L square is the moment at this position here, which is position 2. And because this is negative, and we apply slope deflection equation in which clockwise is positive, because this is negative, it means it is counterclockwise. And that is K21, the force or moment at 2 due to the unit displacement at 1. And this counterclockwise direction is positive because that's the global... Uh, sign convention. This is counterclockwise positive. Like, likewise, at the far end, all you have to do is apply uh, the value 2 EI over L, then 0, then this is still 1 because the rotation is clockwise. So it's the same. Moment at the far end, which is called K41 is the same, negative 6 EI over L squared, so that means counterclockwise. Therefore, we have found K41, which is equal to 6 EI over L squared, not positive, this is by slope deflection, negative means counterclockwise, and counterclockwise is positive in our sign convention. So K11 should be upward and positive so that it will oppose these two counterclockwise moments, or if you sum up moment at the right end, then K11 times L is clockwise, and that should be equal to counterclockwise moments by statics. So, therefore, summation forces Y after we solve K, K11, there's no other vertical force here except K11. So, we conclude that K31, because this is position 3, due to the unit displacement at 1, should be the negative of K11. So, to solve for K11, we sum up moment about the right equals 0. So K21 is 6EI over L square as well as K41, 6EI over L square. Summation of moment at the right 
equal 0 so clockwise moment k11 times l equals counterclockwise moment 6ei over l square plus 6ei over l square so simplifying this k11 is equal to 12ei over l cube and therefore k31 is the negative of k11 negative 12ei over l cube by statics so k21 is 6ei over l square and k41 is 6ei over l square which we already found Next, so we already found the uh, coefficient force coefficients in column 1. So we still have uh, 12 more. Next, we apply a unit displacement, unit rotation, which is counterclockwise at point 2. So this is the rotation theta is positive here because this is counterclockwise but when you substitute theta at the near end which is equal to 1 into the slope deflection equation this is negative because that's counterclockwise in slope deflection equation clockwise is positive remember that so substitute here 2 ei over l times 2 times theta near which is negative 1 it will give us negative 4 ei over L. So negative 4 EI over L is moment and with respect to slope deflection equation it should be counterclockwise. So this is 4 EI over L and this is actually K22. The force at 2 due to the unit displacement at 2 which is 1 unit. And if you substitute, if you compute for the moment here, moment par then it is equal to moment par equals 2 ei over l times 2 theta par which is 0 plus theta near which is negative 1 so 2 ei over l times negative 1 is negative 2 ei over l and neg negative 2 ei over l is also counterclockwise which is the positive direction so k22 is 4 ei over l counterclockwise that's positive direction then k this is k42 is 2 ei over l after we substitute, so K42 is 2EI over L, counterclockwise also, positive. Then, because these are all counterclockwise, the vertical reaction here should be upward so that its moment about the right end is clockwise to counter this counterclockwise moment. So K, but we call this K12, the force at 1 due to the unit displacement at 2, times L equals K22 for EI over L plus K42 2 EI over L and that will give us 6 EI over L square for K12. So K12, uh, summation moment here equals 0. So K12 upward, that's positive direction times L equals 4 EI over L, K22 plus K42 2 EI over L. So K12 is 6 EI over L square. Therefore, the Reaction at the right end should be downward opposite to the K12 to, to balance. Summation versus Y equals 0. So K32 is negative 6 EI over L squared. So we have derived the force coefficients of column 2. Two columns more. Next, we apply a unit upward displacement at position 3, which is here, so right end. In the right end. So that's why K32 is negative. So we apply a unit upward force at the right end, which is 1. Take note that the chord rotates counterclockwise. So delta, although delta is 1, this delta over L is treated, this delta is treated negative because the rotation of the chord is counterclockwise when we substitute that to the slope deflection equation. The force here is called, the reaction here is called K33 because this is position 3 due to the unit displacement at 3. The moment produced here is denoted K43 because moment or rotation at the right end is 4 then due to the unit displacement at 3. So here the upward reaction here is called K13 but in this case 
and the reaction here is K13 and the moment here is called K23. So let's apply the formula here. We substitute delta equals negative 1 over L. These two are zeros. So 2EI over L times quantity negative 3 of negative 1 over L is positive 6EI over L squared. Positive means clockwise by slope deflection equation, but that clockwise moment is negative actually. So K43 therefore is 6EI over L squared. Then if we substitute delta equals negative 1, the same result happens for the near end as well as at the far end. So this K23 therefore is clockwise and that is equal to 6EI over L square but it is negative because this is negative direction. So K23 is negative 6EI over L square. K43 is also negative 6EI over L square or clockwise. K43. Then the reaction at the right end should be upward and at the left end should be downward. They are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. To solve for K33, we sum up moment about 1. So K33 times L equals K23 which is 6EI over L square plus K43 which is also 6EI over L square. Therefore, K33 is 12EI over L cube. And K13 is the negative of 12EI over L cube. Then, we consider unit counterclockwise rotation at the position 4, which is at the right. So, because this is counterclockwise rotation, positive with respect to our global coordinate system, but when we substitute it here in our slope deflection equation formula, it is treated negative, and that is at the far end. So, let's replace this subscript by par, 2EI over L, 2 theta par, so the rest would be 0. So, theta par is negative 1, and 2 times negative 1 times so EI is negative 4 EI over L. And because this is negative, it means counterclockwise. So, this that moment, which is counterclockwise, which is positive with respect to our global coordinate system, is K44. That is the force at 4 due to the unit displacement at 4. So that's the value of K444 for EI over L. Then to solve for the moment here, it is equal to near. So this is 0 and this is negative 1. So 2EI over L times negative 1 is negative 2EI over L. And negative 2EI over L is clockwise. And the uh, meaning of 2EI over L, which is clockwise, is K2, because this is position 2, due to unit, unit displacement at 4, so K24. K24 is 2EI over L clockwise, and that's positive. So because these are both counterclockwise, counterclockwise rather, then the force here should be upward. We call this K14. K14 times L equals K24, which is 2EI over L, plus K44, which is 4EI over L. Therefore, K14 is 6EI, positive 6EI over L squared, because that's also positive. So, summation forces Y equals 0. This is K, K34. K34 is the negative of 6EI over L squared. So, we have completed the calculations of this force. Coefficients, we now assemble them, and this is now the member stiffness of a bead. So let's check. This is K11. K11 is 12 EI over L cube. This is K12. Uh, oh, sorry. This is K21, which is equal to 6 EI over L square. K31, which is equal to negative 12 EI over L cube. K41, which is equal to 6 EI over L square. Then this is K12, which is equal to 6EI over L square. K22, 4EI over L. K32, negative 6EI over L square. Then K42, 2EI over L.
K13. K13 is negative 12 over 12 EI over L cube. K23 is negative 6 EI over L square. Check. This is K33, which is K33, 12 EI over L cube. Check. K43, which is negative 6 EI over L square. Check. Then, this is K14, which is 6 EI over L squared, check. K24, 2 EI over L, check. K34, negative 6 EI over L squared, check. Then, K44, 4 EI over L, check. Now, how do we, or how do you memorize this easily? Now, take note that the matrix is symmetric. With respect to this diagonal, all diagonal elements are positive. Take note of that because we, at these diagonals or diagonal elements, we apply the positive forces or positive displacement. So, first take note of the symmetry. But with regards to technique, this is my technique. Just fill up row 1, memorize row 1 and row 2. So, remember in row 1, the first entry is 12 EI over L cube. Then it changes here in this position here. 6 EI over L squared does not change. In row 2, the first term is, you can easily transfer it here because by symmetry. Then this is 4 EI over L. Then this is half of this will be at the last position. And 6 EI over L squared changes sign here. Just like the first and the third, and first in the second row and the third. And after that, take note that row three elements are simply the negatives of the corresponding row one elements. And row four elements, we copy first row four elements, then interchange position between this and this. So the interchange position, that's the only way. Again, master how to fill in the first row. The second row, take note that that's 6 EI over L, then this is 4 EI over L. Negative of this value, then half of this value will be here. Then the third row is the negative of the first row. You copy the... the Second row elements, then interchange the second and the fourth row elements. So that's my technique in memorizing this stiffness for a beam.